And as we mentioned last week, uh, Chelsea Manning has been subpoenaed and the New York Times wrote that Chelsea Manning, the former army intelligence analyst convicted in 2013 of leaking archives of secret military and diplomatic documents of WikiLeaks, revealed in an interview that she had been subpoenaed to testify before a grand jury and Bow defied it. The subpoena does not say what prosecutors intend to ask her about, but it was issued in the Eastern District of Virginia after prosecutors inadvertently disclosed in November that Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, had been charged under seal in that district. We also heard that uh, Joshua Steve, a spokesman for the Office of the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, or EDBA, declined to comment, but there are multiple reasons to believe that the subpoena is related to the investigation of Mr. Assange. The issue about Chelsea Manning is quite an extraordinary one. I met with Dan Ellsberg when I was out in the San Francisco area yesterday. And of course, he's all over this because he sees himself in, in someone like Chelsea Manning. And Dan asked me uh, how many people he thinks would have decided to go to jail rather than just answer some questions in a grand jury. So I said not, not many people would. She has uh, put herself back into prison after seven years. She, spent in prison, rather than face this secret grand jury uh, to go over most likely the same question she was asked during her trial, her military court martial. And the main question was whether uh, Assange or anyone at WikiLeaks actively participated with her in the stealing of these classified documents, uh, whether to instruct her, to give her a list, to encourage her. And she said then, and she said she would say again, that it was totally her decision and she takes full responsibility for doing this. So she did not want to go over this again. And, and as I spoke with Dan about this, uh, it appears the, first of all, I think, Elizabeth, I don't know if you agree with me, that this in the silver lining in this is they don't have enough yet maybe to indict Assange. This uh, grand jury has been impaneled and re-impaneled and it can be as many times as they need it since 2010 for, the most, for what we understand. Uh, and they're still looking for more. And what I think they want from her is indeed some kind of uh, evidence that Assange took part in the theft of the documents because they don't want to try him only on what the Espionage Act uh, would allow them to do, which is his mere possession of classified information and then dissemination of it. That is illegal under the Espionage Act. That has never been challenged in court. They could probably count on if they got him on that and they charged him on the Espionage Act under that provision of the act, that that would be challenged and it could lose in a First Amendment case. And that could be struck out of the act because it seems to really have the government stifle freedom of the press. Uh, the government could argue that the independent on papers case, the Supreme Court majority decided that, yes, the the Constitution forbids the government from telling a newspaper or any media outlet that they cannot publish something, but that after publication, there can be prosecution. That is what was held then, but no government has ever done that. So it, it seems clear to me that they want to get her to implicate Assange so that they don't have to go down that road, which would lead to a First Amendment uh, challenge by any number of organizations that sue them on that. I just wonder what Absolutely. You think. No, absolutely. I agree. And I think that it makes it makes a, a horrible kind of sense that they definitely seem to be resistant to, tr to um, you know, uh, prosecuting him as a journalist. So they're trying to recast him as somebody who was actively involved in the actual stealing of these documents. That that definitely seems to be the thrust of the, the um, issue as far as what Chelsea Manning is, was refusing to answer questions about. Um, and I think that, as you mentioned, you know, yes, it's extraordinary that she was willing to go back into a situation she's faced before, just, um, you know, based on what she felt was right. And I think that she's just an incredible human being that way. I mean, not only is the a moral stand in and of itself, but but again, the bravery of going into that situation when you've already been there, I think definitely adds a, a, a level of courage that I think is extremely rare. German members of the Bundestag on the left came out to oppose uh, last Friday's jailing of Manning by uh, posing for photographs, 20 of them, holding placards that say, I stand with Chelsea and solidarity with Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Kristen Hafferson, the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, tweeted every day 
Chelsea Manning spends in jail for refusing to testify against Assange and WikiLeaks adds shame to those journalists who remain silent about this disgrace. This applies especially to those who benefited most from her brave acts in the past at The Guardian at New York Times. The Trump uh, nominee for ambassador to Ecuador, Michael J. Fitzpatrick, made threats against Julian Assange in response to questions from Senator Marco Rubio during his confirmation hearings. I am deeply concerned about Julian Assange and WikiLeaks hostile activities and intent to undermine U.S. democracy and national security. That's a problem and letting it drag on much longer would continue to harm our interests and I believe harm Ecuador's interests as well. In the fall, a number of uh, additional restrictions were placed on him, including uh, restricting his access to the internet. He is still officially the publisher of WikiLeaks and we still hold him responsible for what WikiLeaks does. Well, uh, that's quite true. Restricting his access to the internet. Uh, America is uh, probably the next ambassador to Ecuador from the United States. For what WikiLeaks does, they hold them responsible. What does WikiLeaks do? They reveal crimes and corruption. That's what WikiLeaks does, and that's what they don't want WikiLeaks to do anymore. Uh, we look to Venezuela, where Max Blumenthal, from writing for Gray Zone, in which we also republished at Consortium News, uh, refers to a September 2010 memo that happened to be published by WikiLeaks. And as Elizabeth was saying to me before we went on the air, uh, these documents that come out years ago can pop up in unusual ways and refer to a current situation, and that situation is Venezuela. This September 2010 memo, uh, Max Blumenthal writes, by a U.S.-funded soft power organization that helped train Venezuelan coup leader Juan Guaido and his allies identifies the potential collapse of the country's electoral sector as, quote, a watershed event that, quote, would likely have the impact of galvanizing public unrest in a way that no opposition group could ever hope to generate. So this WikiLeaks published a document from 2010 shows that this group that was training Guaido had talked openly about the electricity of the country as being shut down as a way to galvanize public unrest. Of course, as everyone knows, last week in Venezuela, about 80%, I believe, of the electricity went down. The, sorry, the Venezuelan government claims that it was indeed a cyber attack. They blamed the United States for this. Uh, they said they worked to restore the electricity and they, uh, they came under another attack. Of course, the United States denies this. In fact, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, had a pretty awful tweet in which he said, uh, no electricity, no food, and soon no ma Maduro, I'm paraphrasing. But it was just a completely insensitive remark to make because people actually died as a result of that power failure. Uh, we have some news about Tulsi Gabbard. Right. Uh, the heavy wrote that Tulsi Gabbard, 20, uh, the 2020 presidential candidate who is running in the DNC primary, uh, posted on Facebook today speaking out against the US government's treatment of WikiLeaks, saying it would have a chilling effect on investigative reporting. This was a follow up to previous comments she's made to a similar effect. Today, she wrote on Facebook, quote, if the government can change the designation of WikiLeaks from being a news organization, um, the Obama administration's designation of WikiLeaks to a, quote, hostile intelligence service, which was the Trump administration's designation, then any entity online and offline is in, is in danger of being designated a hostile intelligence agency if they carry out investigative reporting that the U.S. government or a particular administration considers to be hostile to itself. This will have a chilling effect on investigative reporting of powerful government agencies or officials, including the president, intelligence agencies, etc. This is a serious breach of our constitutional freedoms and every American, Democrat, Republican or independent must stand up against it. And that was the end of the quote from Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, and you can find that statement, I believe, still on her Facebook page. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and following that, we also saw that free speech groups have now come out in support of WikiLeaks and its move to dismiss the DNC lawsuit against the publisher. Uh, Bloomberg published an article um, titled Free Speech Groups Support WikiLeaks Move to Dismiss the DNC Lawsuit, uh, writing that a trio of free speech groups urged a U.S. judge to dismiss a lawsuit filed against WikiLeaks by the Democratic National Committee over the disclosure of private DNC information uh, arguing that the published material, even if acquired illegally, is protected by the First Amendment. 
and the suit was filed by the DNC last April, accusing Russian intelligence of hacking into computers, penetrating its telephone systems, gaining access to tens of thousands of documents and emails, and releasing them through WikiLeaks and other methods. The DNC also alleged that President Donald Trump's campaign organized uh, organization conspired with WikiLeaks, a claim Trump has denied. And I might add that there is no evidence for whatsoever. WikiLeaks uh, lawyers, General and Assange's lawyers, have responded to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, the decision they made. This is the press statement by Julian Assange's defense on the Inter-American Commission in communication to the parties regarding the proceedings against Ecuador. Uh, what the court or the commission ruled was the following. This is the statement. The IHCHR says that the principle of non refoulement is imperative and applies in full, and the defense awaits the decision concerning precautionary measures with respect to the United States. The American Commission on Human Rights, having received information from both parties, has forcefully declared to Ecuador in its proceedings concerning precautionary measures that Ecuador has the international obligation not to surrender Assange to a country where his person is at risk, the United States, or any other third state from which the journalist is at risk of subsequently being sent to the United States, the United Kingdom. The Inter-American Commission states clearly that the principle of non refoulement that is to send him back to his, uh, another country, take him out of refugee status, is imperative and applies in full. Ecuador is obligated by the decision of the Inter-American Commission to protect Julian Assange, to not surrender him to the United States or to a third state that could send him to that country, and indeed to guarantee his rights as an asylee. This obligation requires that Mr. Assange be treated humanely as per the instructions of the UN Human Rights Council's working group on arbitrary detention. Julian Assange's defense team is awaiting the decision concerning precautionary measures with respect to the United States, where recent reports have attested to the fact that the United States has criminally charged Julian Assange in secret, a situation that sets a dangerous precedent for freedom of the press globally. This uh, into American Commission ruling that Assange cannot be kicked out of the embassy is unfortunately not legally binding on Ecuador, nor would any ruling be illegally binding on the United States. This commission only has the right to uh, demand cooperation from countries, and they'll make strong recommendations. It's politically useful. It's it's a it's a victory for Assange that this decision was made, but. The United States and Ecuador cannot be forced to do what any any branch of the OAS can say. Only the UN Security Council of any international organization really as an enforcement mechanism can actually use military force to enforce their resolutions.